Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing channel. That is also my Facebook group, jrbtreeclimbing.com is my website. And JRB Tree Climbing is also my Patreon if you'd like to support me in my journey with safe climbing. This adventure here is a question that was posed to me over a year ago and there's been a lot of work that's gone into this uh, climb and I'm excited to show you. The challenge was this. John, how can we take the JRB climbing system, which, which I'm wearing, right? Here's my saddle, I've got my rope around my neck. How can we take this double rope stationary climbing system and climb a tree where one of two scenarios is in play? Either the first viable crotch was way higher than I had rope for, or the first crotch really just wasn't viable. Maybe I'm climbing a pine tree where the first branch is 50 feet up in the air and it's dead. I couldn't possibly climb on it. But if there's nothing else on the tree trunk, so for those kinds of trees where basically it's a telephone pole, but the first branch is too high, how could we rig this system? So as we look up on this tree, that first crotch is about 40 feet off the ground and I know that because I have 75 feet of rope in my hand and I went up and over that crotch and my rope was simply too short. The ends were hanging in the air. I couldn't have climbed this. Of course it is viable but again I'm not going to do this twice. Picture a pine tree and that's just the first dead branch up there. How can we take this system and rig it onto this tree? So as long as there are no other branches in the way, and there's a couple twigs I see and knobs, but we're not gonna go real high, right? We might only go, you know, 15, 18 feet off the ground, but we will get off the ground. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna uncoil my JRB system, and I've, I've pre-tied it, so I've got the midpoint in the rope here in, in my hands, okay? So I'm gonna drop the line, and I'm gonna take that I go around this tree. I had to walk around this big tree. Of course, you might be climbing something a lot smaller, but I wanted to, you know, really stress that we've got a lot of possibilities with this. Now, there's some other things you're going to need. We're going to need a retrieval line. So I just carry a piece of three millimeter cord for that. We're going to need a retrieval line got that ready to go. We're going to need a carabiner and we're going to need the newly introduced longhorn soft shackle. So that's a longhorn hitch and soft shackle. Separate video on that. So here's what I do. I've already got my paracord preset and, and you've seen from my prior videos this is how I stash it in the tree. Here's Here's how I would leave it for potentially years. I could leave this for years in a tree. It'll still be there. Out of sight, off the ground. I just pull on that. It releases. Okay. So I got my, my paracord preset up and over the tree branch. The one in the right, I'll be pulling on to rig the system. And the one on the left will be used to capture and effectively girth hitch the tree. And here's how I do it. Take the carabiner, put it on the loop on the end. I now take the soft shackle and I want to capture all three of these entities. I'm going to capture the bite around the tree. I'm going to capture the double lines of rope. And I'm going to capture the, the carabiner. I open the soft shackle, put the bite through, and I use the carabiner as my toggle. Okay? I use the carabiner as my toggle. The point is, I want the carabiner to be my toggle, and I also want it to be inside the soft shackle. Got that? Okay, team, let's get in tight and 
take a look at this a little bit more closely. So first of all, this is my 16 ounce throw ball. I've got a separate video on the throw ball and how to use it. And this is how I got my paracord in the tree to begin with. I do prefer to climb a tree multiple times. And so I'll install a piece of paracord rather than using the throw line. Of course you can use the throw line, but I am doing this demonstration on the paracord. So let's get rid of that. So here I've got my paracord and uh, I'm gonna rig on this side. So the first thing I usually do is put my carabiner on there just so I don't get these two mixed up. They could be blowing in the breeze. There's, uh, you know, it's limited light conditions. I wanna make sure I don't get these two crossed and mixed up. So I put my carabiner on that. Next, I get my climbing rope. And my climbing rope, what I've done is I've just put a little blue magic marker around the midpoint of my climbing rope, which helps me locate the point that I will be creating that, that um, binding portion. And when I put it around the tree, assuming this ends long enough, I make sure to capture the one piece of power cord under the, under the line, because I, I need it there. Now I grab my soft shackle. So the, the soft shackle is going to capture both that bite with my midpoint and the two strands. Okay, open the shackle. This is the Longhorn Soft Shackle, separate video on that. And I've got to lock that. How do I lock it? I lock it with the carabiner. And I want to make sure, like for example, if I just locked it like this, it could cinch closed. And, and that could be a problem. We want to make sure this stays open. And how do I do that? I do that by capturing not only the locking bite, but I'll capture the two lines. See, so you've got that inside. Got that inside. Great. Now the only piece left is my retrieval line. So now that is ready to rig. In order to ensure that this system is retrievable, I've got to put my retrieval line on. Just if something goes wrong and I decide not to climb it, I need a way to get this down. So I'm going to put the retrieval line in the carabiner. And now comes the magic. How do I get this up the tree? Well, I'm going to take my other end of the power cord and I'll put it under the rope. This ensures that as I pull and it starts to go up the tree, I can assist it by working around the tree. So, you know, I might be making a little bit of noise here. Got a little snag on the tree there. Let's see if we can't get over that. Well, we did. Okay. So I'm pretty comfortable with that height. We could go a little higher. Go just a little higher. And so I'm keeping an eye on the back side of the rig because that defines the height of this assembly. And so I think I'm about 22 feet off the ground or so. I'm ready to cinch it and set it. I pull on the other side. To do so. Now I've got a viable climbing system. So you, you see me in the woods, but I'll just do it a little bit here. Bring that up. And with one hand, I or one, you know, my body in one place, I can bring this up and walk around the tree and choose my location. 
and the height at which it will be cinched is defined by the back by the, by this end so don't you know if this is up here that doesn't mean anything it may it may set down here so we I always are on the side of bringing it up a little higher than I need it and then I I bring this down and see right about there you can you can push and pull on these to get it nice and horizontal and then when I finally have it in place a good cinching pull and I've got it ready to go so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick climb on that so unlike prior exercises when we use uh, JRB stationary doubled rope climbing the the system is technically moving it will move in the crotch this is not the case in this case you're basically climbing a parallel SRT system it's almost like a, a redundant SRT system so you're you're going to have um, no movement of the rope in the crotch okay you see how these won't move right they're they're uh, not balanced so it's like a parallel SRT climb okay so here I go let's clip in let's get out our guard hitch foot loop by the way I've never never climbed this tree before this is all in my whole theme of keeping it real this is uh, this trees never been climbed before and I'm wearing my helmet guys ask me all the time where why you wear a helmet Do you wear a helmet when you climb and uh, the answer is I rarely wear a, a helmet when I climb should I I probably should we all probably should but the reason I'm wearing my uh, helmet is number one to promote best practices and safety but number two when I watch videos when I watch videos for example one sticking videos as soon as somebody does something unsafe I stop watching the video well I have folks watching my channel who aren't hunters they're actually experienced climbers like arborists and like rescue personnel and and in keeping with that theme they have encouraged me to continue to show best practices in personal protective equipment because they'll stop watching if you're not wearing your helmet we're one team here we're not just saddle hunters we're, we're climbers and we're trying to further the art so pardon my weird looking helmet okay so now usually I don't like having a you know a retrieval line in my way but for this climb it's necessary so you've seen me climb before this will look pretty familiar except for this little dead uh, tree which is in my way but no problem we'll get around it Climbing on eight millimeter uh, Teufelberger Resk Tech today, and bending the rules a little bit, my hitch cord is actually seven millimeter, which should be should be large. But this Sterling utility cord bends really well and works really well even on eight millimeter rope. I'm using the five two three JRB Ascender and tied it soft bridge mode but with only one loop extending we got videos on all of that stuff on the channel and of course this climbing method really effortless compared to other methods in that I'm not exerting any energy except during that rising move like right now right my body's completely at rest So I'm not going to take time to affix a platform. This is really about the climb. But once we get to hunting height, we spend our time when it's time for rappel. I put on my Munter friction hitch. Take the slack out and I can break those JRB ascenders, right? Key principle of this JRB ascender is that they're breakable under load. And I just broke both of them 
with one hand. And very important, on the way down, we don't want the JRB ascenders to be absorbing the friction. It's my left hand that's holding me back. My right hand has no work. I'm just tending with my two fingers. I come down nice and slow. We don't want anything to get warm. Okay. Now, let's unhook from the system. Not get ourselves too tangled up. I'm going to put my foot loop in my saddlebag. I love this aspect of my uh, adjustable bridge, but I could turn that into a, a pair of suspenders so my saddle doesn't go anywhere. Okay, it's time to retrieve the system. So I'm going to get the retrieval line. Try to get it unspun if it's got a little twist in there. So I've got line of sight to the carabiner. And my other hand, I've got that piece of power cord. So I'm going to start by pulling on the retrieval line. Now on the way down, it might get caught on some bark. And so the same, just like on the way up, I might need to use this line that goes under the ropes to get me unstuck. So let's start by breaking it. There it's coming down. go we got over that you know in the exact situation it's going to vary tree to tree right if you've got um branches or more snags or rougher bark. In general, I would prescribe using this on a tree which doesn't have uh, many impediments, right? We're looking for trees with this method where the first crotch doesn't have a lot of junk between it and the ground. Okay, so let's take a look at how we get this down. And it can vary depending on how much junk is on the tree trunk, how many branches and nubs and, and twigs and whatnot. But the first thing I do is grab a firm grip on my retrieval line and pull uh, down and away from the tree. And if I get lucky, the whole thing will just fall. And I will pull on this as long as the ends of my rope are still within grab. I get a nice amount of rope up here in the tree. It's probably caught on something on the back side, but I'll go ahead and get that to that point. And then, then I, I get my hand here. Now I can't get in your, in your way, but this can be a little bit tricky because by pulling on this line, you're going to try to send it back up. So you've got to resist with the other hand its ability to go back up. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll walk around one side of the tree and then I'll go around and work, I'll be on the back of the tree working the other side. There have even been a couple of times where I just got this thing caught on something and I needed to be in two places at one time. And so what I did was I simply took the retrieval line and I just fixed it around the base of an adjacent tree or on a fallen log just to make sure it couldn't go anywhere and I can get around and work this. So I do encourage you to practice this. You don't want to get your lines caught in a tree. I've never had a situation where I couldn't get them out. But the more aggressive you are in terms of the, the profile of the tree, uh, you know, the, the more opportunity to get them stuck. I definitely wouldn't do this on a shag bark hickory or anything with too many uh, branches and nubs. Uh, smoother bark, the better. And I will finish disassembling the soft shackle. rope and I'll just show you how I coil this if you know you're going to be using this method uh, the next time it's kind of convenient to have the end 
of the rope handy. The, I'm sorry, the center. So I'll take my two ends and I'll do that butterfly coil here. And of course, you know, you can you can do this in the in the dark. Go around here a few times. And I've been doing this thing now where I'll sometimes, because I don't wear a pack, uh, where I'll wear this around my neck, walking in. So I'll do this deal now where... Uh-huh. Hazards of the helmet. But where I'll... I'll wear this around my neck and it just just doesn't get disoriented when I'm walking it's just it's always great I can take the carabiners and stuff them in my bag or clip them together uh, and then the last thing is to coil up our I'll, I'll do a detailed video on this sometime but a great way to, uh, to coil up your rappel rope and one that's got a loop on each side is also that butterfly coil but see what I did I put the end around my finger first to make sure it doesn't get disoriented. And once I got about four feet left, I go around here four times. One, two, three, four. I put a bite through. Put a bite through and then I discovered that this cinches really well. I've got about, you can see about a hand span on each side. I make a, a, basically half of a square knot, but I go, I'll go around twice, so it's, it's, an o, it's a double overhand, and I just cinch that shut, and that just won't come undone. That won't come undone. And stuff that in my bag. Don't want to take any chances that the detail wasn't visible in the video, so let's really get up close and personal here. Here is the loop I'll be rigging with. This is the other side of the paracord loop. Let's put our carabiner on there so we don't lose sight of which side we're rigging in a low light situation. We'll put our midpoint of the rope around the tree and then we'll get our soft shackle and we'll bind those portions together. Now you got to make sure you've you know you've tied your soft shackle and you're comfortable using it. Put that bite through, cinch this through. Now I always like using the hard toggle for this application because this locking carabiner is going to take care of everything in one place. And I always use an auto locking carabiner. A uh, screw lock you can forget to to lock it and steel this is a steel triple action that would probably be even better than aluminum if you can deal with the weight but this carabiner won't receive a side load it will just be pinched against the tree so as long as you've got a, a rugged uh, auto locking carabiner I feel comfortable with this application so in terms of how I lock it let's take it off of the line for a moment that's locked, but in order to ensure that it will not cinch closed, I can grab the two lines like that. Okay? Without taking it off, it would look like this. Put that through. Okay, so we've got that ready to go, but we've got to get our retrieval line on there. Now we've got our retrieval line. And at this stage, as we draw this end up and walk it around the tree, we'll get it into position. And when it's time to set the hitch, we'll, we'll balance and try to get this rig as horizontal as possible and this tiny little tree won't be able to do it but we're going to try to get this as, as horizontal as possible we we don't want the assembly you know uh, drooping like this we want to we want to try to get these lines as horizontal as possible before we set it that's going to give us a nice firm bite and cinch around the tree 
And as always, everything that you see here on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel, I'm sharing what I am doing, but there's a high level of skill and I am going to ask that you carefully and methodically approach using any of these techniques in your own climbing and that you recognize that you do so at your own risk. Please, first and foremost, stay safe. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, another uh, technique which was enabled by the new tools in our toolbox, the Longhorn Soft Shackle. This was the application that I first designed it for and it, uh, it, it's got a number of rigging uh, possibilities. And all you've really got to do is make sure you, you choose a tree which is, uh, I, you know, you don't want too much junk on it because you could get that uh, a, a little hung up and just be dancing around the bottom of the tree a little too long to try to get that down. I intentionally chose a difficult tree today. You can see some of the uh, snags on the bark and it had, you know, wasn't perfect, but that's hunting. All right, guys, thank you very much for your support.